Hey everyone, we're halfway through the year 2016 and I thought it would be a perfect idea to go over some of the great games that have already released this year. So here are my top 5 games of 2016 so far. At number 5 we have Uncharted 4. Now I was debating on putting this on the list or not because I wasn't too keen on the whole game. But I came up with 3 main reasons why it should be on the list instead of something else. The first reason is gorgeous. It is the best looking game I've ever played. It's just a graphical powerhouse. I think everybody needs to experience it just to see the pure beauty that is Uncharted 4. The second part, I know it's a single player game, but the I found a lot of enjoyment out of the multiplayer. There's a ton of customization options. There's a bunch of game modes. It was just a blast to play. And I think if you only play the single player, you should check out the multiplayer because it's very fun. And I think they just released some DLC for it, so I'm gonna check that out. The third and final reason, the main reason, is it had a very satisfying ending. I was worried about how they were going to end Nathan Drake's story, and I am so happy with the way they did it. It was just the perfect way to end that character's story. At number four, we have Quantum Break. Now, I was really excited when this game first got announced, but then after all the delays and change of casting, I was a little worried about how it was actually going to turn out. And when I finally got to play it, it was... I was pleasantly surprised and I really enjoyed the game. The combat felt great. I had so much fun stopping time, unloading a whole clip into one enemy. It just felt like a superhero the whole time and it felt amazing. I loved the story. I think it was the best time travel story that I've seen in any type of media, albeit games, TV, movies. I just thought it was really smart, really well thought out. Uh, it all made sense. I even liked the live action TV show. I know a lot of people didn't. They thought it was cheesy. I didn't think it was that bad. Uh, I thought it was a nice change of pace. It let you, allowed you to see the other side of the story. Um, the one thing that I have a little bit of grip about is the choices that you make in the game. They don't have that much effect on the game. Uh, the first choice is probably the only one that has a visible effect on the game, which is a great choice, but the other ones don't really. But I highly suggest this game. Number three, we have Ratchet and Clank. Now, I never played these games growing up, and I'm so mad at myself for not doing so because I loved every minute of this game. It was beautiful. It looked like a Pixar movie, looked and felt like a Pixar movie. I know everybody's been saying that, but it sure did. Um, it had great charm. I mean, the dialogue was great. It had nice Insomniac Games charm to it. And it had great weapons there was a disco ball that you could throw and then make all the enemies dance and then you could shoot them with a pixelator it was just a blast to play it felt like how games should be it was just fun there's there was nothing there's nothing else really i could say about it it's just fun just play it enjoy it thank me later at number two, we have Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. Now this is completely different than the other games on this list. I know that it's not AAA, they don't have a big developer, um, there was very little fanfare behind it. I didn't hear about it until I bought it and that was because it was half off. I never even played a Digimon game before. The only thing I know about Digimon is what I learned 15 years ago when I was a kid watching it. And even playing this game, I still don't know that much about Digimon apparently. Um, but I loved it. I loved everything. It was it was just a fun game to play. It was very chill, very relaxed. I wasn't stressed at all playing it. Um, I enjoyed just the battle system. I mean, turn-based. There was a turn-based battle system, which I didn't know that I really liked, but apparently I do. I guess Pokemon has drilled that into my brain. I enjoyed it. I loved playing alongside the Digimon that I grew up with, I had a Wargreymon at one point, I had Weregururumon, I had Agumon, I had Greymon. I, I loved those characters growing up. Um, I didn't know much of the story going into it, but I don't think it had really anything to do with Digimon. I mean, at one point, they were selling brain dead girl, teenage girls to boys. It was very weird, very anime, very JRPG. I don't, I don't think it was a kid game at, by any means, um, but I really enjoyed it. I highly recommend it if you like Digimon or JRPGs or just want a chill game that will last like 30 hours and you'll be done. But I really enjoyed it. I loved every minute of it. I hope we get more, so buy it so we get more localized.
finally, number one, Dark Souls 3. Now, I could go on and on for hours about how great this game is, but I'm just going to keep it to a minute or two. The first Souls game I played was Bloodborne, and that game picked kicked my butt up and down the block for weeks on end. But as soon as I beat it, I needed more. And when Dark Souls 3 came out, jumped right in. And everything I loved about Bloodborne is in Dark Souls 3. The atmosphere is beautiful, daunting, unforgiving, relentless. Anything you think of that relates to Brutal, that's what Dark Souls is. Um, every enemy is like a mini-boss. And then within the first 5-10 minutes, there's a boss. It's just, there's no hand-holding, which I love. I think more games need to be like this. The There's very little story, which is okay with me. I don't really care about the story. There is a story there, but I don't care. I don't think anybody cares. I just want to overcome all the obstacles that it throws at me. And it feels so good to do that. I mean, when you're getting beat down for hours at one boss, you get so frustrated that you want to quit. But you know that it's going to feel so great after beating that boss that you continue and you continue and you finally do it. It is the best feeling in the world. Actually recording this footage, I beat, a, I beat the boss that I could not beat in my first playthrough. And everything that I love about this game came rushing back. I was full of adrenaline. It felt so great just to beat just to kill that boss that I'd hated for weeks and weeks. and it, He was just annoying me. I couldn't beat him. And then I finally did. And it was all worth it. Everything about this game is about satisfaction and overcoming the odds. It is perfect. I think it's great for everybody. Not just hardcore gamers. I think anybody could beat these games um, as long as you put time into it. it it's just... A great and it was a great send off of the series I love this game and I highly recommend to anybody that likes video games really well there it is my top five games of 2016 so far I'm excited to see what the rest of 2016 holds and if any of these games gets get the throne be sure to like comment subscribe let me know what you agree with what you don't agree with or what you just had for dinner last night. I don't care, but thanks for watching and I'll talk to you all later.